Warning, this video is my opinion. You don't have to agree and I know everyone's different. Also, this video doesn't contain spoilers for the story, mainly. Mainly just like minor things, a few power up, but I have a timestamp in the video so you can skip it. It's mostly spoiler free. But there is some things though. With that out of the way, let's begin. Today I would like to talk about Kirby the Forgotten Land and why I love it so much. I love it so much that I just had to make a video on it because you all normally know I don't make videos like this. Now, when I think of Nintendo games, I always think of Mario, Pokemon, and Kirby. Well, Zelda too, but specifically Link. Even though I'm not a fan of the Zelda games. Hey, I did try them beating a few, but it's just not my bow tomato soup. Wink. Anyways, Kirby being one of my top favorite Nintendo game series, and this game is what I've always wanted from the Kirby franchise for a while now. I saw like the Kirby right back at your show. My favorite game in the franchise has always been Amazing Mirror, but my first Kirby game was this one, followed by this one, which they're basically the same thing. But to me, Kirby the Maze Mirror just blew me away as a kid, which I will talk about more if this video does good, if you would like to see that. Anyways, I remember as a kid telling people, what if Kirby was like Spyro? And unlike Spyro, even though he has wings, Kirby could fly anywhere. It's like playing Mario 64 with the infinite jump cheat activated. How cool would that be? Then, as the years went by, the last game I played in the Kirby franchise was Triple Deluxe and Battle Royale. Specifically, Battle Royale made me wish we had a Kirby 3D game, thanks to its intro. Then, after playing Kirby the Forgotten Land demo and getting my hands on it after its release, this game blew everything out of the water for me. For the record, I've played a lot of Kirby games, and just for like a reference, here are some of my favorites. To keep spoilers to a minimum, so you can get this game and enjoy it yourself, I'm just going to talk and show a few levels. My character card messed up, so I got to record this the old fashioned way. First, the gameplay. It's fun, even though aiming is a little hard at first. If you're trying to hit specific enemies, or when the bosses go back crazy. But other than that, the gameplay is amazing. Just wish you can fly infinitely, which I understand why they didn't let you do that. There isn't much to say, other than the gameplay is, well, Kirby. If you played any Kirby game, you kind of get the gist of things. Onto the story and the setting. It's definitely my favorite in the series. I love the story all the way through and I love the setting. I love the abandoned apocalypse-like state that everything's in and it's all abandoned. This game particularly reminds me of Zanky Zero if anyone's played that game. I enjoyed all the levels, except for the light out ones. But even then those were bearable because I just enjoy going into the level and exploring everything that I can see within it and just also see what I can get into. It was really nice. It reminds me of Mario 3D World without the timer. I also really enjoyed the main level's collectibles, which is the Water Ds. And like in other games, like the shards in 64 or the flower medals things in Triple Deluxe, I actually wanted to go out of my way to collect all the Water Ds to expand the town. Because I absolutely adore the Water D town. It's beautiful, the interaction with the characters. And don't get me wrong, it's not much, but it's better than any Kirby game we've seen up to this point. I also enjoyed the theaters, the shops, the coliseums, and the mini games there. Now one thing I will say, if you missed one through the level, which is kind of like a rail section, and if you played any Kirby game you know what I'm talking about, the good thing about this game that they haven't done in the previous games is that you can retry it to get the collectible right afterwards, in case you messed up. Some missions though, to get the water Ds is ridiculous and would require a second run through, because you wouldn't know what the requirement was unless you looked it up beforehand. Now they ain't hard, but it's something that I wouldn't think of doing in a certain level. Like, not really a spoiler, eat a certain food in the stage, or kill the enemy with this power up, or run around this area three times, you know, just something like that. Now after you beat the game, there's another collectible you can go for. Now that one's a little bit different because if you miss one going through a huge level, you have to restart the whole level and that can get really annoying. Which it isn't that bad, it's just a little tedious. I won't name what it is, just for spoiler reasons. Now the graphics. I like them a lot. The game is absolutely beautiful. I just love everything about the game. But I did notice enemies in the distance or objects in the distance have a weird frame rate issue. However, I grew up with blocky and blurry 64 and PS1 games and SNES games, so I don't judge games by graphics unless they give me a headache or make me sick. Like the Final Fantasy Stranger Paradise demo, that game got me sick. Or the Spiral Reunited trilogy, until the update to turn the motion blur off, it really disorientated me until I got used to it. Which kinda also got me sick. Now I like to talk about the co-op. See, another player can jump in at any time and leave at any time as, as Bandana Water D. Which makes the game really fun in my experience. Makes some of the collectibles a lot easier having another set of eyes exploring with you. I like to talk about these boss battles now. They are really good. I really enjoyed them. Not only the battle themselves, but the characters are unique. Making me want to see what the next boss looks like. Finally, the abilities. 
I know there isn't a whole lot and a lot of them change with upgrades, but I still really enjoy the abilities. My favorite being Ice, and I'll get to that in a second. And the mouthful mode. I really like the idea that Kirby can control the electronics with his mouth, like the car for instance. I think it is very neat. And the rest of the mouthful mode ones, I like to play them as well, but I'm not going to mention them because of spoilers. And I also like the treasure roads. It does break the pace up a little bit, and you mainly go in there with the abilities that you have unlocked to get a star stone. And I'm really glad you don't have to beat it in recommended time, because that would be very hard to do. I know this is not really a spoiler, but there is a ability, the Sleep Kirby ability is back, and I was really hoping you can upgrade it to fight like you can in Battle Royale. That would be so amazing in my opinion. I would like to take the time to discuss some things that I didn't like, which isn't much. Again, these are my opinions. First is the game's difficulty. Now, I've never had a problem with any of the Kirby games that I've played as a kid, other than like, you know, True Arena stuff from the Superstar Ultra. And I didn't pick this up expecting this to be some sort of Ghost and Goblins, nonsense so i really enjoyed it however now this is going to be where the spoiler territory comes in but i'm going to leave a timestamp that you can skip ahead okay here goes after you beat the game you go to like this warped version of the main areas with different versions of the bosses and they are challenging specifically the last three now i know there's a way around this with power-ups, aka my favorite, the Ice Kirby with the Invincibility Guard. Kind of like with the True Arena with the Rock Kirby and Rocky. That's what I basically use when I beat it for the Superstar Ultra. And I know you can also use a co-op. But without that, it's actually pretty hard. And I know you can use like the status boost at the Water D shop. And I didn't really mess with that, to be honest, to after the end of the game. Because I'm cheap and I didn't want to buy that stuff. And I mainly did it just to get the toy gotcha th gotcha thing, whatever it's called. So without that and just like without playing it with any power-ups, it was kind of challenging. But fun, nevertheless. Another thing I didn't like, and this mainly applies to if you're trying to 100% like I did. I did everything you could except for the gotcha, gacha, I don't know what it's called. But I need a break before I try my luck with that. Because I don't really want to grind for stars, or star coins for that matter. And if I am going to go for the stars, I would rather just spend that on my upgrading of my equipment. Instead of giving it to that one water D to give you the one that you're missing. Another thing I didn't like, it got kind of tiring with some of the enemies, specifically like Frosty or Bonkers or etc. Because you battle them a lot. But that's not too big of a deal to me. Also, I really didn't care much for the warp world. Since it was basically the world you've already did, but it just a little warped, I guess. But it's not that long, so it's not too bad. Like I said, these are just like small little pet peeves, pretty much. And it doesn't overstay its welcome. It, you could call it a spring breeze, if you know what I'm saying. Wink, wink. So, like I said, those really ain't that big of a deal. I mean, it's just like some. It's kind of. It's basically like that in any game. Or let's say you're playing an RPG. And you're replaying it, and there's that one dungeon that, like, it isn't bad, but you're just like, oh, I really want to go through it, but let me just go ahead and get it over with. It's kind of like that. It ain't something that I really hate the game over. It's just something that's like, eh. Now this right here is the thing that I hated so much about this game. And it ain't just this game, all the Kirby games have this problem that I wish they would fix it in this game and they had the opportunity to but they didn't. And that's when you get hit, at least for me, I don't know if it's just my problem or maybe that's how these games are or if it's an RGN, if someone knows please let me know. But I always hate when I get hit one time and I lose my power up. Now I understand if you get hit in the row or if you're low on HP like they knocked it out of you. But it's like every time I have to stop to retrieve the power up and it's so annoying. And it's like that in a lot of the games like I even got it showing here Kirby Triple Deluxe. And I also did it in the Nightmare in Dreamland. But that's just more of a Kirby pet peeve for me. And it's just I just wish they would fix that. Because it's so annoying to stop everything I'm doing to run back and get it. And it just really breaks them. the pace for me. I really wish they'd just fix that. But again that was just a little pet peeve of mine and all this kind of is and it's just my opinion now with all that said and done and the least amount of spoilers i possibly could mention i would say that kirby in the forgotten land is now my favorite kirby game to date i didn't think it was possible since amazing mirror has always been the top dog for ever since it came out and i've played it or maybe they're tied i don't know maybe just because i love amazing mirror as well but honestly i just really love this game kirby in the forgotten land i'm so glad that i picked this game up and of all the games i've played this year i would say that this so far has been my favorite and i know that you know it's still early but it's just it was just amazing it's so tremendous to bite all the things that i didn't like which i said which again 
even the things I didn't like is not really it's just more of annoying and it ain't really that bad and it's only if you're really going for like a hundred percent like I was and it doesn't overstay its welcome and it's easy and you can try again in case you mess up or just ignore it again it's only if you want to collect everything but playing co-op helps with that a lot and cuts a lot of the grind down in many ways. So there's many ways around it. To me though, this is just a perfect, beautiful world, great stories, great characters, great collectibles, aka the Waldies to me is the best collectible in the series. And it just has great level designs, great music, fun abilities, the co-op is amazing again, which you know I've also played co-op in the other Kirby games, which is always a fun time. And to me it was just an amazing experience that I've always wanted from a Kirby game. And it was very well worth it to me. If you're a fan of Kirby and you haven't played this game, you're doing yourself a disservice and I highly recommend you pick this up. If you haven't already, since it's trending and blowing up, I guess. And to me, this is the right direction to take the series in. And I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry if it isn't the best. I'm still new to all this. And thank you if you got this far. And take it easy and be safe. And until next time.